Okay guys, it's time for part two of our big LS3 intake test. This time we have the carbureted LS3 intakes versus the factory LS3. So who wins? In this video, I gathered together a ton of carbureted LS3 intakes. Now, I'm still gonna compare them, just like in part one, to the factory LS3 EFI intake. Unlike the last test, I'm not gonna use a 6.2 liter cammed LS3 crate motor. I mean, let's face it, most of those manifolds were short runner, high RPM pieces. So this time, I stepped up to a 416 stroker with a bigger cam. Short runner, more motor, how do they compare now to the factory LS3? To get things started, we assembled our 416 stroker crate motor, well, <laughs> crate motor, 416 stroker LS3, and ran it first with the factory LS3 intake. Now, this combination, so that we get everything straight here, was a 416 with Weissco and K1 parts. It had flat top pistons in it. It had AFR LS3 head, so it had plenty of airflow potential and, and would not in any way limit the intake manifolds that we were testing. It had a stage four cam from Brian Tooley Racing, which was a 623-596 lift split, a 247-258 degree duration split, and 113 degree LSA. Again, in plenty of cylinder head, plenty of displacement, plenty of camshaft, so we should be able to at least know what these intake manifolds are going to do because they've got plenty of test motor. So our first test was to run the factory LS3 intake. Equipped with a factory LS3, our 416 produced 627 horsepower and 568 foot-pounds of torque. That's Milo Bark in the back. Apparently he doesn't like it when I do uh, factory LS3 intakes. So to get things started, we're going to start off with a couple of carburetor intakes, and this is going to be the uh, dual plane stuff because we ran a couple of dual plane intakes first. So here's the Performer RPM dual plane intake and equipped with the Performer RPM. It actually made a little bit less power than the factory LS3. It made 615 horsepower. You can see the red... Uh, the red lines here but oddly enough if you take a look down low it actually made more low speed power and we've seen that it's a lot with dual plane intakes way down low down in the 3500 rpm range these things make a lot of uh, low speed torque so if you want <laughs> if you're looking for that you're looking for the dual plane that works out really well now let's take a look at our next dual plane intake our next test is another dual plane intake this one was from holly and once again this is our LS3 intake, 627 horsepower, and 567, 68 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed the Holly dual plane intake. Similar thing to the RPM to, from Edelbrock, and it made a little bit less peak power. In this case, we're looking at 614. 615 so similar peak power numbers and again like like with the other dual plane and not surprising that they're kind of similar it made more power down low below 4,000 rpm than the long runner ls3 intake so again if you're looking for a dual plane carbureted intake um, they're going to do very well down low they're going to make a little bit less power in the middle part and, and definitely less power at the top even on this 416. Now, obviously a dual plane like this LS3 manifold is not really designed for a 416 stroker. So this is a little bit out of its element and it's a much better combination for like that 6.2 LS3 crate motor that we put on. And even with a smaller cam than that, most guys that are running a dual plane are kind of more uh, a streetable combination. So think about like, you know, a truck cam or something like that, a stage two or three truck cam with a dual plane on and a crate motor would make a really good combination. So now let's start taking a look at our single plane intakes. Now we're going to get started on our single plane intake manifolds. And the first one up, again, this is our factory LS3 combination, our factory LS3 intake. But our first single plane was the GM single plane, GM LS3 version. And here's what happened for our single plane. Now we've come to <laughs> expect this if you've taken a look at the intake test that we did on the 6.2 liter LS3 comparing the any of these single plane style short runner manifolds compared to the factory LS3. You see this trade-off happen uh, where the single plane starts to make more power at the very top of the RPM range after the the long runner LS3 is kind of falling over and this kind of, this one kind of followed suit through a lot of the curve all the way up to 6400 
the single plane from GM lost power compared to the factory LS3. And if you look down here in the 4,000 range, um, the loss is pretty substantial. I mean, you're talking 40 foot-pounds of torque. You know, 550 versus, oh, I take that back, 49 foot-pounds of torque, almost 50 foot-pounds of torque there. It's, it's quite a bit, so you have to decide, is that worth it? I mean, do you want all of your power centered up there at the top? You know, and maybe if you're running from 6,000 to 8,000, this is kind of an acceptable trade-off. But for most people, since they would be looking at like a 6,500 RPM motor, I don't know that this particular single plane would be a good combination compared to the factory LS3. Let's take a look at our next example. Okay, now we're going to take a look at another single plane intake after taking a look at our GM LS3. Next up is a Holly single plane intake. And like the GM version, crossover point, look at that, once again, 6400 RPM, where the single plane started making more power. And a lot of people think mistakenly, mistakenly so that this is a function of airflow. <laughs> it's not that that single plane starts flowing more air up there compared to LS3 intake. This is actually all reflective wave. It's all It all has to do with the runner length and the intake manifold is used. The runner length determines the effective operating range of the intake and it's tuned for a specific operating range. That's why this long runner makes more power down low. It has nothing to do with airflow. This is not um, that the LS3 manifold flows more air at 4,000 RPM or 4,200 RPM. It's just that it's tuned for power production. There's actually a supercharging effect provided by the intake runner length and it's tuned for the RPM range that you see on the LS3 intake. And it's tuned for higher RPM because it's a much shorter runner on the LS or the uh, short runner intake on the single plane. So that's why we see this and we'll, this will be <laughs> a familiar theme for most of the intake testing here. And I was hoping that we would start to show that this thing gets better um, at a lower RPM compared to the test that we ran on the 6.2 liter. But as we're seeing, you know, even this is 6,400 RPM for the crossover point on a 416 stroker with lots of cam on it and lots of cylinder head. So the L3, L3 manifold is still showing pretty well. Now let's take a look at our next single plane. Okay, now it's time to step up our game a little bit. We're going to take a look at some of the other single plane intake manifolds. Once again, this is our factory LS3 intake. Now we're going to take a look at an Edelbrock Victor Jr. single plane intake manifold. And this one actually is showing a little better than the others so far. You can see that um, the crossover point where it started, this the short runner started making more power than the LS3, moved all the way down to 6,000 RPM. And even below that, the losses were uh, significantly less, even down to 5,100 RPM. Um, the trade-off in power wasn't that great. Now below that, definitely the long runner LS3 intake, you know, definitely the way to go. But the the this Victor Jr. is starting to show a little bit of improvement and if you had a 7000 RPM motor and if you were running from let's say you're running from 5000 to 7000 RPM and you're shifting there this um, this particular single plane would probably work pretty well it might it might actually out accelerate the the factory LS3 manifold let's take a look at a couple of others next up on the list of our carbureted LS3 intakes is another single plane this particular one was from TrickFlow. And we're looking at the power curves here. We see that the crossover point for the TrickFlow was at 6,100 RPM and didn't lose out a ton, you know, from 5,500, let's say, to out to 7,000. It actually exceeded 650 horsepower, like most of the other single planes, 652 horsepower. And it's important to note that on these uh, intake manifolds, if they were equipped with a 4150 carburetor flange, they received a 950 Ultra XP carburetor. And if they were a dominator flange, they, they received a 1050 Ultra dominator. Just to make sure that they had enough, you know, enough carburation for what we were working with. So this single plane from TrickFlow worked out pretty well good power 650 plus horsepower and again crossover kind of in the 6,000 6,100 rpm range now let's take a look at a mast single plane after running our trick flow single plane intake it was time to step up to our mast single plane this is our factory ls3 is always starting off with 
And here we'll select our mast single plane intake. Test description. And like the others, the mast was run with a 950 Ultra XP carburetor. With the mast intake, our crossover point dropped down to 6,000 RPM. The mast produced 650 horsepower. And as you can see, like most of the single planes, dropped down the torque down in the 4,000 to 4,500 range down in that range was dropped down, you know, missing a little bit here in the middle. But like the others, and the, the thing about the mass is that, is that CNC piece, it's really pretty impressive looking. And it might need more motor, um, you know, even more than our 416. But here's the power output of the mass compared to the LS3. Now let's take a look at our next single plane intake. Next up on our single plane list of LS3 carbureted intake manifolds was an Edelbrock Super Victor. And this particular one, because they offered it in two different versions, this was their Edelbrock Super Victor designed with a 4150 flange. So again, it was run with that uh, 950 Ultra XP carburetor. And I'm sure people are gonna ask in the comments, um, yes, we did uh, dial in the air fuel timing with jets and air bleeds and every, everything that was necessary to make sure that we had a consistent air fuel curve between the, um, all of these intake manifolds. Now, it really wasn't very hard once we started running the single planes. The dual planes were, took different, definitely took different um, tuning to get the air fuel right. But on the single planes, there wasn't a lot of adjustment to be made, um, a couple of jets here and there usually, because the power curves were so similar. So on this um, Edelbrock Super Victor, we see that this thing produced 656 horsepower, and our crossover point was between 6,000 and 6,100, kind of like the others. It offered good power. Um, again, down low, you know, in the 4,000, 41, 4,200 range, it lost out a little bit com compared to the, some of the others. Now that we've run the 4150 version, let's take a look at the Dominator style version. That's the Super Victory equipped with a 4500 flange on it. Okay, our final test of the LS3 carburetor intake was another Edelbrock. It was a Super Victor, this time with a 4500 flange. And for this particular one, we used a 4500 Dominator, a 1050 Dominator. So here is the power output of our 1050 Dominator Little Rock Super Victor intake. It made 668, uh, 669 horsepower because 668.6. And the crossover was down at 5800, so the lowest of the bunch. So it had the highest peak power and the lowest of the bunch. And if you take a look down even further, it really didn't give up that much, kind of like one, of, one or two of the others even down at 5,000, so if you were to run this thing from 5,000 to 7,000, or if you were gonna run it higher than that out to 7,500, then there would be no contest. This um, 4,500 flange Super Victor is definitely a good way to go. Like the others, it lost out down below that, but this is more of kind of a racy manifold, and this would be a good, actually be a good combination for a drag race car. Now, you'd need a little bit of a converter, obviously, for this thing, but once you got this thing running from 5,000 to 7,000, this is on this kind of combination of 416 with a big cam in it and, and good heads. Milo uh, really likes the Super Victor. <laughs> you can hear him talking about it. Uh, this is really a good combination. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think about our carbureted LS3 intake shootout? In my opinion, the factory LS3 is still hard to beat. I mean, even on a big cam 416 stroker, that factory LS3 still did pretty well. Now, if you wanted to run a high RPM, say 7,500 or 8,000 RPM, one of these short runner intakes, definitely the way to go. But if you build even a 416 that's gonna be a street motor, that factory LS3 still works pretty well. I'm Richard Holder, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll keep testing.